you stretch out like a lad. No, I need a fool around and flash it like a lad. It's at least a hundred right to see me in a go car. Nigga, can't you get it out of me? That's why they hate me, babe. They ain't let me in, I had to vote hard. If they kept me sleeping in the street, then they gon' hate me. YouTube, what's good? It's your boy Demo here back with another video. And I just want to say thank you guys for 100,000 subscribers. This is crazy to me. This is such a milestone. As you guys know, I've been grinding here uh, over on the YouTube channel for years and years. And to finally reach this milestone that I've set out for myself means the most. I would not be in this position without all the love and support that you guys have been showing throughout my entire journey. We're here now, and it's only up. The road to a milli starts right now. We're going to take a look back at the journey and see how exactly we got to this 100K and just take a look back. A little reminisce, a little trip down memory lane if you don't mind. You feel me? So sit back, relax. I hope you guys can enjoy this video. If you guys do like the video, please leave a thumbs up. Stick around to the end. I will explain literally everything that's been going on with me this year, the reason why I haven't been uploading and kind of just what's going on in the future ahead for the channel because it's some amazing stuff. I'm super, super blessed. And um, again, like I love you guys because I wouldn't be doing this without you guys. Also, YouTube approved the plaque. So I will be doing an unboxing and kind of reaction video once that play button comes in. For those of you who don't know, you get a silver play button when you reach 100,000 subscribers. Of course, that's gonna go up on my wall. Now, I want your guys' opinion. Leave it in the comments below. Where should I put the plaque? I've been talking to Twitch and everybody that I want to put it like right here, you know, and kind of do some redesigning on the on the setup. But if you guys had my setup, where should we put that silver play button? Leave it in the comments below. Let me know. Um, hopefully one day I can have a silver one right there. And then one day I could have the, the gold one right there. Who knows? Let me know in the comments below. Without further ado, man, let's just get straight into it. You know what's crazy is I didn't even start my YouTube channel to make airsoft content or really just do anything i had no purpose behind it it was just me showing off my lifestyle goofing around with the homies and uh it eventually ended up growing into me <laughs> uh showing the airsoft side of things and it, that's what took off but bro what boy what are we doing right here boy i'm not listening to the music for copyright reasons so y'all can put whatever music in your head behind this but oh, whoa whoa hey yo nope uh, we off we're off nope we're off we're off what what i'm throwing all back mondo mondo what do you do what Nope. Next. Yo, so originally I was actually going to edit like an entire montage, um, but I realized that kind of just shows the journey. It doesn't really tell the story. So I'm actually going to segue this into a story time video. I'll try to find some clips that I can kind of play over while I'm talking and whatnot, but I'm just going to kind of tell you guys the story, man. It's a... Uh, it's been a long time coming. So before I even started making airsoft videos, which is what literally everyone knows me for, um, before I was making airsoft videos, y'all was making all kinds of different content, whether it was hoop content, um, funny, like relatable humor, comedy style content. Uh, we were doing skits. We were doing rants. We were doing, I guess back then you can consider them story times and whatnot. Um, I was even doing dance content. Like there was so much different types of videos I was doing. But what I realized is everything that I was doing kind of catered around lifestyle. What I was really just documenting was my lifestyle it was just wherever we went i had the camera um there's even a clip of mondo somewhere from some interview where he's saying like yeah we never looked at demo as like a creator bro like he has a camera and this is just what he does we don't see demo as like demo to air soccer or like a youtuber like this is just kind of like what demo's always done yo and honestly it is something that i've always done i got my first camera back in like 2008 2009 and the jerk era just started and um kind of reaching this milestone and really reflecting and looking back at old footage made me realize bro like i've kind of always done this all right so how did i get into airsoft so way back in the day we were buying little airsoft guns from like ice cream trucks and from the swap meet and then eventually like big five like sporting goods stores and whatnot you know and it was just me and like shout out to all my homies in the neighborhood that i grew up with bro and we all got into airsoft and it's crazy to think now but we would have airsoft wars in the front in the front of the house like I can imagine driving by now and kids out there shooting airsoft BBs at each other, bro. But that's what we was doing back in the day. All right. So as I got older and kind of grew with airsoft, I started getting made fun of for it a little bit more. Um, and it was just a time where like, you know, being black, I would get made for made fun of for being into certain things like skateboarding. For example, I grew up skateboarding. I still love skateboarding till this day. 
Bro, back in the day, I used to get clowns so tough. Like, why you doing that white boy shit? Only white boys skate. Oh, you Tony Hawk. All the all the typical jokes, you know what I'm saying? But um, airsoft was one of those things as well, bro. I would get made fun of for, for playing airsoft. So it naturally kind of became this, like, secret. I was really into it, really nerding out about it, right? So um, it, it stayed this, this secret with me until college years. I'm partying. I'm throwing the parties. We going to clubs. Uh, I'm eating girls and all this stuff, right? And... I'm still, airsoft is still a secret of mine. It's just still like a hobby that I do that no one really knows that I do or whatever. And bro, I'll never forget, like the homies would clown on me or whatever, but like, I'll never forget like girls making fun of me for it. And I'm like, yo, like I'm an open book, bro. So trying to get to know people, I would tell them like, yeah, so I'm into this, this and that. And then they'll be like, wait, airsoft? And I get clowned like, oh, you play dress up and play with toys? And I'm like, well, shit, if you want to look at it like that, then just, I guess I'd they dress up and play with toys, you know? And like, I would really get called like a nerd or you're a dork or this and that, or that's whack, you playing with toys, right? So when I got into YouTube and making videos, I'm like, you know what? Like, I've been this cool kid and everything else. Like, why can't I just bring that same energy in airsoft, bro? Like, why Why is it that like, I gotta get clowned for doing this airsoft shit? You know what, let me, let me document this and let me show y'all just how cool this shit is and how cool this shit can be. And one day you guys will respect it. So I remember hitting my first 1,000 subscribers and I was, Geek, man i was so hyped i was tripping like yo there's really a thousand people willing to subscribe to my youtube channel to watch my content at the time i still kind of didn't really know what direction i wanted to go with it but by that time i had already made a few airsoft montages and you know i was just kind of just solo just really doing my thing but again really big on the lifestyle vibes yes it was airsoft content but it was really still just like lifestyle vibes and that you know we reached a thousand subscribers from that yo and after that 1000 it was all gas because within that same year i would go on to hit 6000 subscribers play speaky for my first time ever and kind of go crazy land a spot on syg and give back to the community we've hosted the operation takedown event and all of that all within one year only using a gopro and an iphone i had no computer to edit on whatsoever uh, up, up until i think it was about like yeah six thousand subscribers i remember that holiday at christmas time uh, i got my macbook and that was the first computer that i actually got my hands on so i would then go on to reach ten thousand subscribers and i remember at that point i'm kind of sitting there like yo this is insane right it kind of was more validation for like okay demo like you're on the right path and at the time in my life uh, I was kind of going through a lot, man. I was working retail. I went from building skateboards at Zoomies to selling airsoft guns at Extreme Tronics back in the day. Shout out to the OGs, you guys already know. But I was at this point in my life where like, I, I didn't want to just work retail when I've got this other stuff kind of going for me in the content space, you know? So I actually ended up having to leave my situation over at Extreme. I stopped working retail there and I got an opportunity with my boys over at SpeakUB. And this is when you guys really start seeing me kind of travel a little bit more, um, compete a lot more and you can see it in the content. It was just different vibes, yo. Like I'm traveling the world. I'm getting a lot of opportunity with the team, but also individually, I went to Taiwan. You know, just a, a lot of different opportunities coming my way, um, all while the channel itself and me individually, I'm growing. Yo, so from 10K to 50K was probably like 2018 to like, early 2020, right? So I've been through so, so much within that time period, man. Like at this point, the channel and the content has been booming. And I'm talking about like, I'm traveling the world. I'm competing all over the place, bro. My clips are going viral. I'm making connections with all kinds of just amazing people, right? Now, the one thing that I realized at this time was that like, yo, I'm dealing with true burnout, like true burnout. I'm getting sick of making airsoft content. Let's face it. I not only have been working in airsoft for so long, I've been creating content in airsoft for so long. I go home, I'm watching airsoft videos. Yo, it's affecting my personal life at this point. There's airsoft gear all over the crib. My family's like, yo, what are you doing? My girl is like, you spending time at the airsoft field. You need to be spending time with me. Like it's a lot that was also the time in my life where i realized like okay pretty soon i'm gonna have to do something different so next thing you know covid hits and um i don't know if this is a hot take or nothing but like airsoft to me has not been the same since covid hit places have gone out of business the industry took a heavy hit and when the industry takes a heavy hit the community naturally takes a heavy hit um 
and I think just at this point, man, like, yeah, we was all locked in the house or whatever. I, I still had to get content because I, I was in a position to where I was getting paid to do this stuff, right? So um, at this point in my life, my mother gets sick and she's hospitalized for like 20 days, right? Um, I didn't want to film content anymore. I was really ready to give it all up. And when I say give it all up, I mean like I was ready to sell all my airsoft stuff. Like I, I was done with airsoft. Like I said, there was gear piling up around the crib and it's just like, my mom is sick, bro. Like I'm, I'm good. I don't want to, I don't want to do this anymore. All while I'm getting harassed online to post content. Hey D, where's the airsoft content? I'm posting pictures of my girl and my family and people are commenting. We don't want to see this crap. We want to see airsoft. We want airsoft. We want this. We want that. You know what I'm saying? And I'm, I'm the type to stay quiet, bro. Like I'm, I'm good. You feel me? So that's where my head was at. And my mother was in the hospital insanely sick right she comes back from the hospital tremendously weak um damn they lost all of her hair and whatnot you know and my only focus was just making sure that i could get my mom that she could regain you feel me yo and the one thing that got me through it all was uh it was gaming actually and i just got into streaming and the vibes were just different man we were all locked in the house like, if you played peak pandemic verdansk Warzone vibes was different back then, man. Oh my goodness. But yeah, man, that's really when I kind of discovered something new with streaming. I was still able to create this content, but it was in a live environment where I'm still able to interact and engage with my audience. Also, the reason I decided to start streaming on Twitch instead of YouTube was because at the time, since I was going through that burnout, streaming to 70,000 plus people, it was nothing but airsoft, 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 airsoft. And at the time, like I said, I was the burnout was insane. I was just, I wasn't even trying to talk about airsoft when I played video games. And it was cool because like, Twitch was such a new experience for me that I ended up creating a new audience and meeting other gamers. Now they're showing interest in airsoft, what I do. So that's when I realized something. I was like, yo, like, okay. My knowledge of the gaming space and my knowledge of the natural route that these gaming content creators take, I have something here. I have something very different here because everyone I was meeting through Twitter was like, oh, like I'm trying to get into IRL content. I've only been doing this gaming content. I'm like, damn, I've been doing IRL content. I'm only trying to do this gaming content. So what's up? So it allowed me to kind of network with so many different types of people all while letting my airsoft audience know, hey, I'm streaming on this different platform. If you guys want to talk to me, pull up in the chat. I'll literally be able to answer all of your airsoft questions live right there without it being 70,000 people spamming, asking questions. And it worked. That was when I realized like, okay, maybe I had to go through that burnout for a reason. I had to go through all of the hard times to discover that this is that next step. So from that point on, I would continue to stream over on Twitch, making all kinds of connections and just good vibes in the gaming space, all while still making moves over here in Airsoft. As you guys know, the link up of a lifetime, I was able to collab with Quavo and take him Airsoft and for his first time ever. And I actually just found out that he went to go play Airsoft a couple months ago in the same gear with the same gun that I gave him. If that ain't impact, like, come on now. So balancing both types of content, I realized I had something unique. I would then go on to reach 90,000 subscribers over on the channel at the beginning of 2022, where I made a decision. Making the decision to branch out and do something different this year has literally been the best decision of my life. Because I've done so much in Airsoft, I've been able to kind of become this representative or face for the sport for other communities and other industries and other people on the outside looking in just to give you guys an example man like this year has been such a blessing uh, some of the first people i was able to connect with was ball is life for all my hoopers you guys already know what it is i grew up hooping i grew up playing basketball uh, if you grew up playing basketball with all the content that's out there you grew up watching ball is life um i've got some of the ball is life heads that go play airsoft you guys might catch me on a ball is life channel getting crossed over you feel me but that's the type of content that i've realized i have the potential of doing is more crossover stuff more stuff of me tapping back into my roots you step into my world i step into yours we've already done it with quavo why can't we do it with more for those of you who don't know some of you are tapped in so you know but shout out to my gwb fan man i love their approach and their mission and their perspective literally it's just gaming through the eyes of black content creators, connecting with some of the biggest black content creators in the gaming space as it is, and also meeting people that aren't necessarily in gaming, kind of doing their own thing that play video games. I'm a part of that 
that ecosystem as well you know what i mean so it's been love shout out to gwb and of course we got to give a shout out to phase clan for those of you who know i've done the phase one challenge they had the recruitment challenge and from hundreds of thousands of people we made it to the top 20 we went on their warehouse show a little reality show where they were you know trying to recruit their next phase member i didn't make it but the connections and experience are literally unbelievable and insane and, and i have lifetime friendships now and connections with people i could name drop all day but there's a lot of other people that i've made connections with through gaming through stepping away from just making typical airsoft content and taking a break this year to set myself up for unbelievable life-changing opportunities now after all that we have reached the point where i have hit 100 000 subscribers over here on the youtube channel i'm sorry that was such a long explanation but i wanted to give you guys the full story because i do get asked this a lot now moving forward with the channel you guys again can expect that type of content i don't want to say too much but you guys can also expect my regular airsoft content i know a lot of you guys missed the og videos and the og vibes of me just running around running and gunning like airsoft montage style shit. there won't be as much of that but it will still exist and it will still come to the channel. Um, I will still be building high capitalists. We're still doing giveaways. There's no way we hit 100K and don't do a giveaway. That'll be its own little video announcement in itself. You feel me?